John Hastings. I'm the bridge steel specialist for the Southeast for the National Steel Bridge Alliance. I've been with NSBA going on three years now. Uh, prior to that, I was with the Tennessee Department of Transportation for about 24 years in their bridge design section. I worked on pretty much every type of bridge they do there, uh, focused primarily on steel, everything from grade crossings up to major river spans. Uh, my largest uh, bridge was the uh, over the Tennessee River, had a 500 foot span. The uh, plate girder was about 13 and a half feet deep, but also worked on road shapes and everything else. Uh, they were I covered straight bridges, skewed bridges, curved bridges. So pretty good steel background uh, with that. I'm going to stop sharing my video. It's just a little distractive to me and we'll get started. So here we go. So I'd like to start this session today with some background on bridge cost. Uh, Michael DeGregorio, who's a construction estimating engineer with HDR in their Salt Lake City office, recently completed a comprehensive national study of bridge cost. Uh, the assessment of new construction market pricing for steel and concrete bridges is shown on the right of the screen. Uh, the conclusions reached by Michael came as a surprise to him as well as other bridge engineers. The pr three primary conclusions are steel bridges are cost competitive, road steel bridges are the most cost competitive, and states typically exhibit a bias toward bridge types. So let's dig into the study and look at the project objectives. Uh, the first was to determine the in-place cost of structural steel and precast concrete bridges. Break these costs down into subgroups, compare similar structures, and compare national and regional cost. The scope of the report was to look at new and replacement vehicular bridges. So the study only looked at what I would call typical bridges. So no trusses, no arches, no cable stay, and no suspension bridges. It also did not include widenings. And it covered a period of time from 2011 to the second quarter of 2019. Only design bid build projects by state DOTs were included. So no alternate delivery projects, which typically don't break the cost down into separate items. So we didn't include design build or CMGC projects. Uh, the study included bridge projects from the 12 states shown in green, which represent three states from each of the four NSBA regions. For each of these states, uh, bridge plans and historic bid tabs were collected for all their projects. Overall, approximately 730 bridges were obtained in these states. So on the left of the table here, you will see the NSBA region and the state. Across the top, you will see the bridge type, steel or concrete, and the date. The data in the table gives you the number of bridges during the calendar year, and the total is given during that time period. 16 outliers were identified. These included uh, railroad bridges, some trusses, some arches, a couple pedestrian bridges, and one what I called kind of a unique structure. It was a plate girder bridge, but it had a timber deck, so it was not included. So once these outliers were removed, the study ended up with 714 bridges as shown in the bottom right corner of the table. To my knowledge, there has never been a study of this caliber. A complete takeoff was performed on each of these structures. The items included in the square foot cost consisted of mobilization, structural excavation, foundations, beams, and the superstructure or deck. So no no mobilization, some states break the bridge mobilization out. If they didn't, it was based on the percentage of the bridge cost to the total cost of the project. The cost does not include an overlay, a bridge rail, the approach slabs, and aesthetics. Uh, examples of aesthetics would be bridge lighting or other decorative items that had a separate item number. So they're trying to compare like structures and some of these bridges may not include all of these items or the details vary drastically between states. The costs do include escalation factors to bring the cost to the second quarter of 2019. 
They are also adjusted by a location adjustment factor to fairly compare projects on a regional or national level. As you can imagine, a bridge in New York would not cost the same as a bridge in a more rural state. The key parameters recorded for each structure included bridge type, span length by the largest span, skew angle, horizontal curvature, phasing, coatings, and material grade. Five bridge types were selected in the study. We have steel plate girders, rolled steel beams, precast pre-stressed concrete I-beams, precast pre-stressed concrete boxes, and precast pre-stressed concrete slab beams. So in order to compare like structures, HDR looked at the distribution of the span data and determined four span increments were appropriate. A breakdown of the distribution is provided in the bar chart and the graph on the right of the screen. So we have the short span, everything less than 100 feet. That includes steel plate girders, road steel beams, the precast pre-stressed concrete eye girders, the concrete boxes, and the concrete slabs. Next, we have what they call the medium span, 100 to 150, and it included steel plate girders, road steel beams, and the concrete eye girders. Next, we had the long span, 150 to 200, and the extra long, everything greater than 200. So shown on this slide is the distribution of the cost by span length, and each bridge is represented by a dot. So a lot of engineers look at average cost, which is represented by the dashed line. The good news is half of the time they are high with their estimate. Unfortunately, the other half of the time they underestimate the cost. As you can see, the costs are all over the board for these bridges. So HDR proposed looking at a range instead of an average cost. The range they proposed is the 25th and 75th percentile, which is shown by the upper and lower red dash lines. The red shaded area represents 50% of the bridges. With this proposal, 25% of the bridges fall below the range and 25% fall above the range. I've seen a few states publish a range for their bridge cost. Uh, one that kind of jumps out in my mind is Florida DOT does that, but most, most just publish an average in their bridge design manual. So HDR then used the span data to further refine the ranges. So hopefully in the future, other bridge features such as skew, curvature, material grade, and corrosion protection systems can be used to further refine the data. Currently, there just isn't enough data to be statistically significant for those categories. So now let's look at the national cost for all spans. So this is the short through the extra long. As you can see here, it's all spans. Costs are shown in dollars per square foot along the bottom of the chart. The different beam types are given on the left as well as the number of bridges in that type are shown in the parentheses. So we have 108 steel plate girders, 72 steel road beams. Uh, the blue dots represent the 25th and the 75th percentile, and the blue line represents 50% of the bridges. So the tighter the range, the more predictable the cost. So you can see there's a lot of overlap. If you look down these two lines, in the uh, bridge ranges between the various bridge types, which shows that they are competitive with one another. And the steel roll beams have the tightest range and are the most predictable. Uh, the 25th percentile cost is essentially the same for all these beam types here too. Oops, there we go. So now if we look at what we call the short span, so this is everything less than 100 feet, we see that both plate girders and roll shapes are competitive with precast concrete. Roll beams still have the tightest range, which represents the most predictable cost. They also have the tightest range on the overall cost, which is shown by the gray dots and the gray line. The 25th percentile cost is essentially the same for all beam types. It gets tighter with this span arrangement here too.
So now for the medium spans, uh, that's the 100 to 150, the concrete box beams and the slab bridges drop out. There was one concrete box found in this span range. There's still a lot of overlap in the cost ranges. Once again, showing the steel girders are cost competitive. The steel plate girders and the precast pre-stressed concrete eye girders have essentially the same 25th percentile starting point. So if you'd like more information on the cost study, please reach out to your local bridge steel specialist. Their contact info can be found on our website as shown at the bottom of the page aisc.org slash NSBA. And there's a tab to click on to get that contact information. For steel to be competitive, we recommend the following considerations. Um, use balanced spans when possible. Refer to our continuous span standards at the URL shown. These are for three span structures with center spans of 150 to 300, uh, girder spacings of seven foot six to 12 feet, and they have both homogeneous and hybrid solutions. You can accomplish uh, balanced spans with the end span set at about 75 to 80% of the center span. Next, uh, try to eliminate or reduce the number of piers to optimize span arrangements. Our span to weight curves will help you make those decisions. They're also available for free on our website. These cover simple and continuous spans for various beam spacings. They were developed from cost-effective conceptual solutions that NSBA has prepared. Uh, they cover spans from 50 feet all the way up to 450 feet. Uh, we also recommend using wider girder spacings to reduce fabrication, transportation, and erection costs. Uh, next, balance the loads in the interior and exterior girders. In order to accomplish this, uh, set your cantilevers at about 25 to 33% of the interior girder spacing. Uh, we also recommend that you optimize the web depth. Simon, our free line girder software, has this capability built into it. You can download it from our website. Uh, you can also uh, use uh, eSpan 140, another free program from the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. And uh, last but not least, uh, simplify details. I really can't say this one enough. The biggest issue I see are excessive bolts and field splices and cross frames. Uh, we also see excessive welds at times and all these factors drive up the cost significantly of uh, steel girders. Uh, you know you think it's just a bolt that you're paying for but you're paying for the drilling, you're paying for the bolt, you're also paying for the installation. Uh, most contractors tell me they figure about 10 minutes per bolt you may have three guys up on the girder, one on the ground hooking things up to the crane and you have a crane operator. So all that time adds up significantly. So uh, try to use only as many boats as you need. But that uh, concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, call me or email me, Hastings at AIS.